Chapter one lecture notes is found under module one, and then you just scroll down and get to chapter one lecture notes. And you'll to find this video, you probably found the lecture notes. There are um, so right here under module one. Scroll down to chapter one. Now, I'm still making this video, so obviously this video, um, when you're looking at it, it'll be between Chapter 1 Class Notes and Chapter 1 PowerPoint Slides. I'm going to rename this su Supplemental Videos when I'm done. All right, so Chapter 1 Lecture Notes. These are the ones with the solutions. If you want to, you can print out the one that's not filled out and just take notes while you watch this video. So... Um, Accounting information is an information and measurement system that does three things. It identifies, it records, and communicates uh, the organization's business activities. And we'll be talking more and more about identifying and recording and communicating. Okay? So that is just the basic terminology. A lot of people say that the accounting system is really the language of business. And you're going to come to find out while you take this class that you're learning so many concepts and terminology that's used in the business world that even if you're not an accounting major, you'll come to find out that that is a huge benefit of taking this class. And you'll also come to find out that it's more about rules and ways of doing things than numbers. You probably think at this point in time, accounting is a bunch of math. A lot of math involved, no doubt about it. Basic math, adding and subtracting them multiplying a little bit of fractions, even a little bit less of basic algebra. But it's really rules, and it's the language. It really is the language of business. There's two groups of users of financial statements, two groups. We got external, which is here where my mouse is, and we got internal right here where my mouse is. Let's look at external. This is basically what this class is all about, BADM 225. We're preparing, um, we're preparing uh, financial information for external users and examples are shareholders, stockholders, owners that that aren't working for the company, lenders, directors, external auditors, labor unions, regulators, voters, legislatures, government officials. So regulators could be like the IRS. And then we got customers who may... Uh, be curious about what the company's doing and where they do business at and you know should they buy from them you know if it's a business right i got two choices i can buy from company a or company b which one is going to be around next year or the year after because if the company looks like it's going to go out of business then developing a new relationship right wouldn't be the smart thing you'd want to go with the one that's more likely to be around in a few years suppliers right they're waiting to get paid you know, I'll sell you something and you can pay me suppliers, right? They want to make sure the company's good, good fit or a good possibility. You're going to get paid, right? So financial accounting is for external users, bulk of this class. The next principles class that you'll be taking, so this, this class right now is 225. The next one is 226 internal users. If you don't work for them, you don't see this information. It's not available for the public. So an owner, right? President, CEO, she can own a ton of stock and she works for the company. So she would get both, right? External, as an external user, she would be interested in that information. And then as an internal user, because of being a CEO, right? All right, so internal users. We got managerial accounting and that's internal for internal people only. So management or certain groups of, in the company will need that information. That's really how it goes, okay? So that is a poor scribble scrabble of a triangle. Sorry about that. I'm drawn, I drew on the screen before I did this video. Anyway, so ethics is never okay to be unethical, all right? And as a matter of fact, newly minted CPAs, they just passed the exam. They're applying to be licensed. And in South Carolina, before they can be licensed, they have to take one more course and pass one more exam. And that is the ethics exam. Uh, the ethics course that South Carolina wants these 
future CPAs to take is from uh, the AICPA, American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. So it's a national ethics course and they have to pass it. So being ethical is important and we understand that good people make bad decisions, sadly. And one of the concepts that's used to analyze good people, you know, not, not just your type of person that's going to do bad, um, of looking at the three pressures, <clears throat> the three rationals that are the, the three points, the three factors that lead to committing unethical acts. The, with the biggest one being fraud, you know, the intentional mis misrepresentation of facts or figures with the intent to deceive, which is fraud. Uh, you don't need to know that definition that I just gave you for fraud. But anyway, it's, there's three factors. Opportunity would be one point, pressure would be the other, and rationalization would be the other. Rationalization could be something like the company owes it. I've been here for 20 years. Pressure could be like uh, medical bills. Um, spouse lost their job, something like that, and an opportunity. Really, senior management, they can override internal controls. So they have an opportunity that presents itself that a lot of people don't have. Opportunity, pressure, and rationalization. Some people are saying that um, this is the dated model. There should be a square with four points or maybe change out one of these points. If you're interested in learning more about that, I can always provide you more information. One of my fellow doctoral students did her research on that, or dissertation on that. What, what rule? Who's in charge? Well, FASB, which is not listed here, is in charge, Financial Accounting Standards Board, but it makes up what's called, what the rules we go by though, not who's in charge, but the rules we go by is GAAP. Generally accepted accounting principles. Generally accepted. Gap. So two A's. The store's one A, and you can shop there, but gap, two A's is what you need to know for the exam. Generally accepted accounting principles. So the purpose of gap is to make the accounting statements relevant, reliable, and comparable. And why in the world they're not the rules of accounting is because they're different industries. And there's different ways of doing things. So Boeing and down in Charleston, South Carolina, may do things one way. And um, Walmart in a dis different industry, they don't make stuff, they sell stuff, and they definitely don't sell airplanes. They do things differently because it's a different industry. So generally, what we've agreed upon is generally what we're gonna do, there's some variation in choices depending on the industry or Maybe if you're in the same industry, you can pick one or two. You got a couple choices the way you want to do things. So that's why it's called generally accepted. But but you, you can't deviate. I mean, this is the way you do it. And you can choose A or B possibly, but you can't, can't do either one or the other. That's it. So um, generally accepted accounting principles. And we'll talk more about that as we go through the course. So to have rules, to have an, a set of principles that we're going to go by, we have to have a framework that provides boundaries, if you will, like a sporting event that, you know, it's, it's, if it's inside the lines, it's fair. If it's outside the lines, it's not fair, right? So we, what we do is we draw lines and we say, okay, stay within this area. So what are we talking about? Accounting principles. There are like the measurement principle. We're going to use actual costs to record our activities. Okay. All right. And then it says here objective. And I'm telling you, this is the, if you decide to major in accounting and I, you know, me, I'm, I teach it, right? So I'm going to encourage everybody to do it. But uh, objectivity is one of the most huge concepts in accounting. We want our accounts to be competent, which means they really know their stuff and they stay up with it. They're very knowledgeable. They're you know, bright people and also objective, right? We want them independent, unbiased, um, and uh, separate, right? 
from uh, from the people they work for. Let's say if they're um, accountants in the company they work for or external auditors. Revenue recognition. We want to recognize revenue when goods or services are provided. And I'm telling you, time out. My checkbook, and I thought I had a checkbook here on my desk. I don't. My checkbook, I only record revenue when I get the money. We just said we're going to record revenue whether we get paid or not. More to come on that. Don't worry about it right now other than just to say, okay, something big coming down the pike. He just said that. That's different. Expenses, same thing. We're going to record an expense when it's incurred. So I am paying, today's the, no, yesterday. We paid it yesterday. We paid our natural gas bill at the house for our, basically we just got hot water and stove this time of the year. Natural gas bill on October 10th, 2022, we were paid it for September. Now, I don't record an expense in my checkbook until I pay it. We just said we were we record it when we incurred it. So if this was a company, I would have recorded that as an expense in September, even though I didn't pay it. Full disclosure principle. Companies record the details behind the financial statements. Okay. And real quickly, going concern, we assume that company's going to be around for a while. Monetary unit, it's going to be dollars. In America, it's going to be United States dollars, right? monetary unit we're going to use the currency of the country that we're doing business in we can divide things up the year up we can divide it up in um months and quarters and years but a company might last like ford it's over 100 years old so these are really just artificial time constructs quarter month year ford's been around a long time so to keep track of records to compare things um to keep you know, um, organized, we divide things up by months and quarters and years, okay? Business entity assumption. We're going to assume, let's stay with Ford since we use that as an example. Ford is a separate company from the owners and founder, founding family of that company, which is the Ford family. So Ford family members have their own finances separate from Ford Motor Company, okay? I have a feeling you guys already know these three terms, um, so I'm just going to mention them and move on. Sole proprietor and corporation, partnership. So a sole proprietor is one person doing business. Um, a partnership is two or more people called partners. And the corporation is more, you know, it's a, a separate legal entity whose owners are called shareholders or stockholders. They have limited liability. Sole proprietor, unlimited liability. Partnership, unlimited liability. Corporation, limited liability. You can form an LLC that is a limited liability corporation, basically a sole proprietor or, or a partnership, I guess. You can have two or more owners in an LLC that uh, have limited liability. They get the benefits of a corporation with the simple stru simpler structure of a sole proprietor partnership. Not quite, but similar. All right, so... This is a long video and I want to just really drill down into this one section. So I'm going to create a second video that covers these last two points of this chapter. Stay tuned for part two.